One more time. One more time. Welcome. So what I'd like to do is show you. You got questions? OK, we'll bring to that. So what I have is y equals negative 3 times 2 raised to the x plus 2. And what I want to do is show you how to graph this by applying our transformations. And by applying our transformations, we notice there's two different transformations here. We have a negative 3, so that's going to tell us to reflect our x-axis. And there also, we have an h, which is positive 2. So therefore, we're going to shift two units left. OK? So the first thing we want to do is when we're doing a problem like this, is we want to graph the parent graph. So I'm going to make a parent graph. Now, we're not going to use the regular parent graph of y equals b to the x, because now we have an a, right? And that a, without forget about the negative, that a is a positive value 3. So that's going to affect our parent graph. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a table. Now, you can create. You can use as many table of values, ladies and gentlemen, as you want to. Um, but when creating table of values with exponential function, there's two important points that we have. One, where the graph crosses the y-axis. And the other one, where x equals 1. And we can easily find those, because if we take a value and raise it to the 0 power, we know that's going to equal 1. And if we take a value and raise it to 1, we know it's just going to equal that base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate for our graph for each one of these. So what we'll do is we'll have y equals, oh, our parent graph is just going to be y equals 3, 2 to the x, 3 times 2 raised to the x plus 2. All right, That means it's a parent graph with no transformations. We're not dealing with any transformations as far as reflecting, shifting, up or down, left or right. So I take y equals 3 times 2, 3 times 2 raised to my x, which I'll say, what about when x equals 0 plus 2? No, not plus 2. It's just x. So 2 to the 0 is going to be 1. 1 times 2 is 3. Then I'll check for y, what happens when x equals 1. y equals 3 times 2 to the first. 2 to the first is going to be 2. 2 times 3 is going to be 6. Therefore, my parent graph crosses that. And then instead of at 0, 1, it now crosses at 1, 2, 3. And over 1, up 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right. So now what we need to do is now go ahead and determine what exactly are going to be a reflection. Well, if my graph has these coordinate points of 0, 3 and 1, 6, when I reflect this graph over the y-axis, now all my points, instead of being in the positive two quadrants for y, they're now going to be reflected into the negative two quadrants. So instead of having 0 up 3, I'm now going to have 0 down 3. And instead of going over 1, up 6, I'm now going to go over 1, down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now I graph this as a reflection. OK? And now, ladies and gentlemen, as the last one, what we can see is we're going to be shifting the graph two units to the left. All right? So again, I'm just kind of looking at these coordinate points that have been taken with me. And now, rather than taking my graph, I now just need to take this graph and shift it two units to the left. So rather than having 0, comma, negative 3, I'll now have negative 2, negative 3. And instead of having 1, comma, 6, I'm now going to have negative 1, comma, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right. And if we wanted to go ahead and find the y you know, intercept, again, we could put 0 in for there. For there and we'd see that, that it's going to have a y intercept at 0, comma, negative 12. But that's not something we are counting on in this exact example. Um, the next thing, though, we can determine our domain and range. Um, the asymptote has not changed. All we did was the asymptote is only going to change if we're going to be shifting our graph up or down. So the asymptote is still going to remain the same. So our asymptote is going to be at y equals 0. Our domain is still going to be in my graph. It still works for infinite values to the left and to the right. So it's negative infinity to infinity. However, my range is now going to be from negative infinity to 0, as no positive values are now going to be a part of my range. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph with transformations an exponential growth problem. Thanks.